Records. And we're live, everybody from New York City. Just gonna wait till people can chime in. give you the 10 exercises you need to stop doing not doing but stop doing the people that chimed in please give me a thumbs up if you can hear me because it's a bit noisy so it is a brutally hot day in New York City all right hey there they are hey Mary just good so, the exercises today are being cut is buzzing and there's people in the background talking we're doing the best we can but it's gonna be more of a demo video in the first place yeah there's background noise but it's not my gym per se so we're doing the best we can so the exercises they fall into two categories category number one is just plain dangerous and needs to stop right now Category number two is just not all that effective. So that brings me to my topic, which is, are there must-do exercises? So in bodybuilding, there's always like this, oh, I saw a big guy doing this, and henceforth, I must do it too. And that's, that's just not the case, okay? This, this isn't follow the leader or you know, I must do something because somebody else does it. It's simply, in bodybuilding, there's one thing that matters and one thing only, that's contraction. So, if an excess doesn't work for you, kick it out, okay? It must go, it must go. So, with that being said, let's get this show on the road. And I'm gonna turn the camera over to Greg. And the first thing that you Ever, ever be doing is front raises. Front raises. Something like this. Stop. Stop doing this, okay? Just stop. Even people that don't lift weights have front delts overdeveloped from the computer. People have shoulder pains, neck pains, all kinds of issues. If you add more direct work, you're setting up for an injury. Okay, front raises, they need to go. Sorry? The sound? Let's see if we make this better. It's better now, if I have the mic closer. Better like this? Yeah? Good. Okay, so front raises need to go. Because from all the pushing and all the pulling, you're getting plenty of front delt work. Plenty. Instead, please, people, do some rear delt work, okay? Meaning, rear delt flies, leading from the elbows, a nice motion, round the back, straighten the back. Round the back, straighten the back. The majority of lifters is this close to an injury because of overdevelopment in the front deltoid area, okay? So front raises, they gotta go. Just gotta go. Equally bad, or maybe even worse, is the upright row, okay? You see this, people are almost biting into the barbell, just so. It's bad on the wrists, it's horrible on the shoulder, and accomplishes very little, okay? So upright rows, they gotta go, okay? All of this stuff, instead, I recommend you do something I call them V-pulls. So one foot goes out, you're leaning a little bit forward, and you're pulling up and out. Up and out, okay? For a nice medial delt development. So I get it, you, all you guys want round shoulders, but the upright row, you're gonna blow them up. It's not a good idea. Okay, it's upright rows, no go. Everybody got that for the shoulders? None of this. Next, the cross grip deadlift. So you often see people having it like so, you 
in a rolling grip, one hand over, one hand under. Now, it's true, it makes sense. You have a better grip and you can pull more weight. Here's the issue. It's an uneven pull on the one bicep. It's uneven on the spine. And nobody, no I've been in gyms for 25 years, well, nobody ever switches the grip. Well, we're doing the best we can. This is the thing about going live. So, the cross grip simply doesn't work for bodybuilding. Now, I know people always say, oh, we need a strong grip, this, that, the other. No, you don't. What for? Not an arm wrestler. I'm not some sort of power lifter. Instead, I suggest you pay $7 and you get these fabulous straps, okay? You can pull a lot of weight in an even grip. Because remember, in bodybuilding, the goal isn't to move weight, it's to develop a big back. So people tell me, oh, Michael, you don't have a strong grip. I'm like, yeah, but I'm too sturdy and you're not, okay? And that's all that matters. So the cross grip, unless you're a power lifter, which is a totally different ball game, has to go. For bodybuilding, I don't love my clients. Everybody got that one? Good. The next is walking lunges with the barbell. Okay, and now it's popular because Ronnie did it and this, that, the other. Here's the problem you spend more time and energy balancing than you actually do in terms of training your legs. Especially if you go heavier, so let's say 180 or whatever have you. There's more energy spent holding the barbell than you actually focusing on the legs. Instead, let me show you how we do walking lunges. So walking lunges, Greg's just going to walk next to me we'll be doing, uh, let's say you pick your left leg, right? It goes out, you lunge down, you stay crouched. Goes out, lunge down, stay crouched. You get 10 steps, you come back on the right leg. And again, if you go heavy, use straps. So you can actually focus on training your legs as opposed to balancing them. Always leave your ego at home. Nobody cares what it is that you can move or not. Okay. Then, we're hitting over here. Uh. Underhanded tricep press downs. Have you opened an anatomy book? The triceps can't work properly. And secondly, your grip becomes the limiting factor. Okay? So all of a sudden, again, you're struggling with the grip and not training your tricep. It's just plain stupid. Okay? Kick it out. Instead, my all-time favorite, just get around. No, we've done, we've done this one before. But the three-step triceps is awesome. Here you work in the bottom, the middle of the strength curve, and the top. All were not struggling with the grip. Everybody got that one? Okay, the next one I won't even demonstrate because it's so stupid. Cable kickbacks. Okay, so where you hook your foot, what the hell? You look like a donkey in heat, and the amount of weight you're using is tiny. It's tiny. You want to develop your glutes? Have you heard of squats? They work really well. Cable kickbacks, as well as the adductor machine over there. No way. 
It's just plain stupid. Okay? At my gym in Astoria, there's dudes doing 30 reps with 20 pounds. What is this doing? Just take the stairs. You get more out of it. Mm -hmm. Carry kickbacks, total no go. Then, for the few of you that train calves, this one, seated calf raise, no. Just no. Why? Great question. So you see this? The visible part of the calf, the gastronomicus, it unhinges when you bend the knee, meaning it doesn't work. So you're training only half your calf. That's just not a good idea. It's time not well spent. So if you're lucky enough and you train in a gym where they have the donkey calf raise, great. Otherwise, the leg press works really well. The standing, I'm not crazy about because I feel there's too much pressure on my back. But if it works for you, you know, by all means. So the seated calf raise, just want to put your drink on it or so, but don't need to exercise. It doesn't do anything. Now we are back. Stuff that's actually dangerous. Which is... I really hope I survive this. The reverse grip bench. Do you have a death wish? Like, why? Why? Okay, it puts a little bit less stress on the shoulder than the actual bench. It's so dangerous. You know when people have slipped the bar and it crushed them? It's also a weird motion in terms of how are you bending the elbows. Okay, so the reverse bench has to go. To be honest, my favorite exercise in terms of pressing is the kneeling cable press. Like, you kneel down, shoulders back, squeeze tight. It works really, really well. Okay? Nothing can happen. You're just fine. You want, you want to do regular bench? I mean, yes, will be my guest. But the reverse, I, would, I wouldn't touch. So now we're setting up here for the next two exercises. Belts here. See, that's the power of life. You never know what's going to happen. So, the dumbbell fly, it's not dangerous. It can be, but it's more like ineffective. So, the issue is this, right? It's physics. So, you come down. The stress here on the shoulder is really, really great. And once you pass this line, there's no more resistance. So from here to here, the muscle doesn't do anything. So I feel like, especially for stronger athletes, the risk reward doesn't really pan out on the dumbbell fly. So instead, I'm liking the cables underhanded, you're stepping out, you come up like so, you can even give it a little twist on the top outward, that's where the pec minor gets engaged, and you have even resistance at all times. So again, dumbbell flies, it goes kind of both ways, I just feel they're not the most bang for your buck. Okay. Um, Last on my hit list. Dumbbell side raises. Again, physics. From here to here, you do nothing from your side delts. Because you're just moving sideways. So the activation is lost. The main hit comes on the top. So 
they can be made effective. I just feel that better ways of doing things. Again, cables. Which means you're stepping out and moving from the elbows, making yourself into an X. You have resistance from here, you can even stretch the medial delts, go up in nice slow motion. Got that? So what, what's, what's, what's critical in bodybuilding is that don't fall to any dogmas. It's always being said, dumbbells are supreme. Sometimes, not all the time. In the end, it's always what contracts and what doesn't. So as an example, you do side raises, and half the motion you don't contract. Well, that's stupid, right? So I'm taking a vote for Wednesday. There's two options. A, me training back, or B, weather permitting, me walking down shirtless Fifth Avenue and we're taping reactions. So cast your vote in the comment section. See what you guys want. All right? Have a great evening, everybody. And we see you Wednesday. Thanks for watching.